Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So this is a continuation of the previous video. Now the previous video we rebuilt the gearbox, uh, put a high speed gear, seals, um, bearings, went through the gearbox. This video, uh, we're gonna rebuild the bearings. We got the saddle bearing, the tail bearing, the wrist pins, we're gonna put it back together. And in the next video, we're gonna go actually set it, hook it up to, a, uh, to an oil wheel. These videos are part of the series that I'm playlist oil field 101, kind of things I think you need to know to make a living in the pool bowl oil field. Um, so as far as real life time goes, as far as my time goes, I just got back from a trip, uh, first trip with an RV. And I don't know what happened, but I got home and we're about, you know, we're about halfway through this video. I'm shooting the intro right in the middle of it. And the 500 gig, SD uh, flash drive that I had all the footage on and we recorded so far got corrupted. I got some of it back, some of it I didn't get back. I don't understand that. I'm not a computer guy. If anybody's got any good hints or whatever, I, I don't know. I'm really aggravated about it. Um, I plan on this being uh, geared towards machining and machine shop uh, and all that footage pretty much is gone. So this is a bearing housing. This is of the saddle bearing. We got this one, there's another one that goes over here, and this part pivots in the middle. So here's a clip I had on my phone. This is the center part of the saddle bearing. This is part the beam bolts to, and it's wore really bad. You can see the wear as it comes around there, and what I've done is chuck this up sort of offset uh, so that I can end up with as big of a circle as I can get out of, out of a worn shaft. Uh, first things first, when I bring these in, these bearings are always covered in grease. They're always caked up with grease and dirt. They're really difficult to clean. And what I'll do is I'll pull all these bearings apart, take the housing and throw them. I got a little fire pit thing out there, throw some wood in it, throw some gasoline in the bottom, light it. And I'll throw some wood in this, uh, use a few greasy rags and then throw all the bearings on top of it, set it on fire and get a good fire going in here and the fire will burn out all the bearings when you get done you'll have a kind of crisp um stuff on here that you can sort of brush off of the brush or whatever they come really clean that's the easiest way to do that just build you a good fire throw your bearings in it and they come back the next day and they'll be nice and cool so how these bearings work uh, this is the brass bushing that would have been in here and uh, as you can see it's been worn through uh, after this has been burnt, uh, you can usually, you know, torch down the side of these. Now this one's wore all the way through, it came out really easily. So here's this housing, and you can actually see where it's been metal to metal here. It's kind of rusted more when I had it on fire. Uh, I don't really feel much wear in this. I'm sure that it's measurable, uh, but there's not a lot of wear. If this is wore badly down in the case, you'll have to build this up with brass. Uh, brazing, uh, braze it up and then turn it back around. Or if it's just a little bit, you can, you can just bore it out. Uh, I'm not going to put brass back in these. We're gonna use bearing plastic. Let me pick it up and show it to you here. So this is the bearing material that's going back in it. Here's a couple of different sizes. Uh, I buy this, it comes, it's an unusual number. I think it's 41 inches or something. It comes in, uh, it's longer than that. Maybe it's 54 inches or something. Anyway, this comes in a stick. Just take a, a miter saw or whatever and, and cut off what you need. And uh, this is the bushings, the material we make the bushings out of. Anyway, that's a big advantage of the plastic is uh, if it's out around just a little bit, you can just knock the bushing in there and it'll sort of conform to an out around circle. By the way, this is a bushing that came out of the tail bearing. And as you can see, I just take a torch and just sort of melt through it. And then it'll, it'll be flexible or, or compressible and uh, you just take a hammer and knock it out really easily. So let's cut to the machine shop and you can see me make the bushings that go in the tail bearing.
All right, so here they both are. Uh, I gotta hit this one with a bird knife to knock that lip out of it. So this is the first time you've seen this uh, tailbearing housing. The next time you see it, it'll have both of these bushings driven in it and both seals driven in it. The shaft that goes through this started out two and a half. It's just off camera uh, towards the top of the screen and it was turned down to two and three eighths to, uh, to clean it up and make it round again. So they both go in this housing, one on either side, and then the shaft goes through the housing. Next will be the saddle bearing. You saw us working on this piece, uh, and of course the caps that we torched the brass out of. Uh, I'm not gonna video them. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. I'm gonna get those done probably tomorrow. I'm done for the evening. It's 9.50 Sunday evening. Um, I'm gonna get those done, then we'll get you back to chop here probably middle of the week. Uh, so I, I got that knocked down. So this bearing's finished. I don't know how well you can see down there. In there. You can see how those don't quite come together. The little gap in there is sort of the grease reserve or, or whatever, where the grease is held. It's kind of dirty down in there, but I think it's all right. <laughs> So the only thing we got left to do is to uh, stick the shaft in it. The other side is usually the, the trick. All right, got it shoved through there. You got to be kind of careful with the uh, lip on the seal and sort of work it through. It's got two steps to go over, and uh, you got to kind of get it through there and be careful not to tear it up. This thing is done other than some grease certs. It needs a grease cert here that fills the cavity up you saw. Uh, and pushes grease between the the bearing plastic and the shaft and then it comes back up through here so i fixed and dry the bushing and uh this housing for the for the saddle bearing and i was just explaining in the part i lost uh that uh the fire leaves some sort of rough residue on the inside of these bores and you need to take some sandpaper to clean it up i've got a cheap harbor freight hone to put on a drill and run through all these and it's just a nice conforming sanding mechanism that cleans them up makes them real smooth and takes the uh, takes the bushing easily as i was saying you know this would be quicker i mean this would be i mean you could do this with sandpaper but for a cheap harbor freight home in literally like 45 seconds you can have the inside of it that looks like that. There it is. Probably can't tell, but where I was hitting on the sides of this, it's got a little bit of a lip drove in here. Easy way to fix that is I already got my rotary file here on the table. We'll just come in here. Knock the lip out of there. Just walking around with a seal. Also, you need to be real, real careful driving seals in with a hammer without a seal driver. Uh, but on these, on these bearings, these seals are. basically just to keep dirt out and so if you screw them up a little bit and you know i'm not i'm not nearly as worried about these as as i am you know like ones that go in a gearbox so let's work on the wrist pins all right so these wrist pins uh finished pulling these apart they've got one of these little i don't know what the i need to look up the name of these i don't know what they are one of these little double lapped Oh geez, come on. One of these little double lapped 
snap ring things. I don't know what you call them. So I just got an old pipe key here. We're gonna see if we can knock it out with it. They're just pressed on there. Yeah, it's moving. I am actually going to try to keep these cleanish. Uh, we don't want a bunch of crap in that uh, inside the rollers of that bearing. I ain't like my anvil. There it is. Little snap ring doohickey goes back on. All right, so if you remember when we pulled this out, we had to hit the end of this with a sledgehammer to knock it out. And then of course now I beat the dog crap out of it. And uh, to fix this, I'm gonna take this thing on a grinder, just grind these first about two threads off and there should be plenty of meat. These screwed nearly all the way down and uh, they're nylock, so there's not, not a lot there. Okay, just ground a, a lip off this thing right there. The nut's still a little bit tight. I ran it, uh, I ran it all the way down with a wrench, but it makes a few rounds. Anyway, uh, I got these all cleaned up. I actually did wash these. These roller bearings do need to stay pretty clean. Uh, they're more critical than the, uh, golly, than the uh, bushings. Where'd my hammer go? Should be able just to knock these right into housing. These should go pretty easy. That's what it needed. And then this little double lap snap ring deal. <laughs> I hate not knowing things. Should have looked that up. Goes in just like so. Right there is one finished wrist pin other than some grease. All right, so I think I got all the parts gathered up for this. Uh, we're back to real time. This is past the, the lost footage. Uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is knock the wrist pins in it. Uh, so these bores need to be pretty clean. They don't need to have any grease or anything in them. It needs to be metal to metal only. Uh, if they got anesthesia or grease in them, it can cause them to come loose and start working. Let me tripod you. Okay, so these <clears throat> wrist pins are tapered, and so you should be able to pop this in, and it'll stick. You won't be able to pull it back out. Just like that. Now, you want to check that, because if the taper's wrong, it won't, it won't stick in there. You'll be able to pull it back out. So here is the saddle bearing. Uh, this was part of the video I lost. This was kind of cool. This is one of the things I wanted you to see. Um, this originally was four inch. Uh, it's now three and a half. You know, the, the proper way to do it 
would be you could just torch the the welds off here this piece of shaft comes out get in a piece stick it in there weld it in uh, this would have been a pretty expensive piece of shaft you know it'd been a hundred bucks and uh, uh, you know I, that's not what I did anyway what was interesting about this it was neat to watch in the machine you know all the wear was in the bottom there wasn't anywhere on the sides or the top and so this thing was shaped sort of like a football and uh, anyway I put a center in it you've got to kind of measure uh, where you think it'll be to make the biggest round circle uh, you know when you the center is in the center of it now uh, but when you start it's offset and anyway then all the you know all the, the material that you take off is off the side that's worn anyway this just cleaned up both of these are, are just cleaned up I didn't take any extra off but anyway I wish you could see that because it's pretty neat anyway uh, here's the caps the caps just slide on the end and then it goes up there this may be about all I'm able to pick up it's pretty heavy uh, but we'll see if, we'll see if I can get it up there oh I don't know about this Oh, I got it. Alright, so I'm going to tie on this thing with a forklift, drag it outside, and we'll uh, finish putting heavy parts on it. On your forklift, you can cut a hole in your fork, get you a two inch trailer ball. Makes it really handy for moving trailers, but I'll show you another trick you can do with it. Next goes the tail bearing. It's held on with four U-bolts, two on each side. Uh, it sits up here on these little chairs. Uh, if that's the right word, I'm not sure. Uh, the shaft sits here, and then the U-bolts go through here, and this cinches it down.
All right, well, that's it together. I've got to pick up a bunch of nuts and bolts uh, in the morning. A bunch of them twisted off. Some of them are pretty junky. I'll get all the bolts put in it and catch you back tomorrow after lunch. All right, so I got it all bolted together. Next thing I got to do is grease it up. You'll notice all these bearings have got a grease cert and then they've got a, like when it gets full, it comes out here. I'll show you where we're going to do the wrist pins first. So the grease cert is on the outside here and when it gets full, it'll come out that little port there on the inside. So I've got these little deals. They are a pressure relief valve or a back pressure or something or another. I don't know exactly what the name of them are. But these are designed to go in these bearings uh, and, they're, and they're a seal until you put grease in them and it opens this little valve and the excess grease comes out. Uh, I like to run these in the roller bearings because these will seem to try to push the grease out. I don't generally put these in the other bearings uh, just because after a decade or so, it may end up pushing the seals out of it. <clears throat> and they don't, if you just leave the port open, I'll show you in a minute, uh, it seems to not be a problem. Anyway, I need to check these and make sure they're not plugged up because if they are, you know, 100 PSI will push that seal out and you won't be able to feel that little of pressure uh, on a grease gun. Just like that. Well, there she is a running. Gearbox is a little bit noisy with the new gears, but that'll quiet down in a couple of months. So some of y'all are probably wondering what the heck is up with the clickbait on the thumbnail that, that was on this video. And uh, we're fixed to get to that. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you in just a minute. I would like to say, if you just came here to watch me work on the unit, uh, we're done with that. Uh, you can come back if you'd like to watch the next one. We're going to haul it out and set it. That'll actually happen today, uh, but for y'all, it'll be it'll be next week. But anyway, I'd like to talk a little bit about kind of why I do what I do in my mythology of why I do whatever. Uh, I'll also say that uh, I know it bothers a lot of y'all that are kind of you know working factories or your industrial maintenance or or whatever and uh, you watch me put this stuff together you know sledgehammer on bearings and 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 stuff's greasy you know i don't clean things i just throw it together and i will admit that in this video you know not changing the hole in the gearbox after you overhaul it i will admit in this video i exaggerated that more than i typically would now this is this is how i typically do things i put bearings on with hammers and you know whatnot but i, I kind of I kind of stepped it up one more step in this video just to sort of trigger some of y'all <laughs> because I like to do that. But I'd like to talk, kind of talk about this little unit, money, how things make money, whatnot. All the junk we've got, uh, you know, money's not like it used to be in the oil field. Everything's tight. You've got to really watch where you spend your money. Uh, even in $100 oil, uh, our cost of operations, electricity, pipe, steel, labor, everything is through the roof. And it's not like it was you know back in the 80s when when people you know when anybody get an oil field to make a lot of money it's just not like it anymore and that being said you know this little this little unit that we worked on a d18 american i could buy a used one of these it was in decent shape for probably two grand now i spent two thousand dollars overhauling this thing and when i started i kind of made the point that it was probably almost not worth fixing uh, but nonetheless, I would rather spend two grand on rebuilding something I have than spending two grand on buying something because now I know exactly what I've got. It's got a bunch of hammered together bearings that work clean when they're put together. <laughs> now you get the point though. Uh, it's not new. It's not necessarily in the best of shape, uh, but everything is good enough. And, and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to try to drive home in this video you work on this stuff, it's got to be good enough. It absolutely has to be good enough, but it only has to be good enough. You know, if I would have taken the time to make all this stuff spotless and sandblast the bearings and painted them and done, you know, everything else, it wouldn't have made this thing last any longer. So back to the clickbait part of this thing. So this is actually the third one of these D18 Americans that I've overhauled, uh, basically done exactly this, except the first two I didn't have to put gears in. And, um, 
I don't know, probably like three months. And I've got a little lease here. It's pretty close to my house. The lease doesn't make much money. It makes about two barrels out of four wells, something like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe two and a half barrels out of four wells. And uh, it's got three of those little ATM Americans and they were all wore smooth out, they were all junk. And I've been trying to piece them together for the last several years. I finally just said, you know what? They all needed saddle bearings, they all needed parts. I just brought them all back in over them one at a time. Now, out there, there's one of them's on like a 600, one of them was on, uh, well, it was like a 1,050, and one of them was on this well, we're fixing to set this on, was like 1,600. And they were all rod heavy. None of them had enough weights. Uh, the 600 didn't have any weights, and it's actually this one, the one that came off the 600 is going on the deepest well. Uh, I took the one that was on the on the 1050 and put it on the, uh, the 600, and then I took the one that was on that 1500 or 1600, the deepest one, and put it on that 1050. So they were both weighted about correctly, but now I've got this one, and it needs about a thousand pounds of weight on it, and it didn't have any. Now, back to being cheap. Back, back to being good enough, but just good enough. I uh, So those weights on Americans, I think they're about 100 pounds a piece. I don't know exactly. Um, and you can get them. They're readily available in, in the you know oil field junkyards around here. I don't have any of them. I was going to have to go buy some. And uh, and they wanted 100 bucks a piece for them. I need $1,000 worth of weights. And uh, why would I spend $1,000 on junk iron when there's junk iron all around me? My yard's full of junk iron. Anyway, let's run up there and take a look at it real quick, and we'll come right back in here. So back here to sort of the clickbaitish part of this uh, part of this video, um, I just took a, a small box Chevrolet and pulled a couple of main caps off and ran some all thread up in where the main bolts went, and I bolt, drilled some holes and bolted to the beam. It's just got the crank sort of smashed down. If the crank moves, it may come loose, but if that's a problem, I can just tighten the bolts up, you know, for a few days, and it, it should be. Once I get these tied, it's not going to go anywhere, I don't think. Unrelated, I got me a couple more toys to mess with here. I got an old uh, air compressor. So I've got I've got a 118 Fairbanks. There's a 208 over there I bought. Um, I bought this old air compressor. And, uh, and I bought this generator, this light plant. It's a 110 volt DC light plant. Anyway, I bought all four of these for a hundred bucks a piece uh, from a drilling company that was scrapping a, a bunch of stuff. Anyway, a later date we'll mess with them. Anyway, um, that's that's all I got to say. Video is over. I just kind of wanted to show you. Uh, I, I know that's stupid. I know it looks stupid, but that's the point. I wish I had a, a, a water pump and a fan to put on it. <laughs> you can see the fan turn. I may have to try to find one. Um, but nonetheless, this video's over. I'm actually supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm fixing to gather this up. I got some timber out there. I'm gonna cut some timber up. We're gonna go set this safe, but you'll have to wait till next week and, uh, and we'll get you a video out next week. We'll haul this thing out there and, uh, and get it going up and down. Appreciate you watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good things. I know I'll ramble on way too long. Uh, next one will be short this week and we'll catch, catch you then.